Slavic paganism or Slavic religion define the religious beliefs, godlores and ritual practices of the Slavs before the formal Christianization of their ruling elites. The latter occurred at various stages between the 8th and the 13th century, the southern Slavs living on the Balkan peninsula in southeastern Europe, bordering with the Byzantine Empire to the south, came under the sphere of influence of Byzantine Orthodox Christianity beginning with the creation of the Slavic alphabet first Glagolic, and then Cyrillic script in 855 by the brothers Saints Cyril and Methodius and the adoption of Christianity in Bulgaria in 863 CE. The East Slavs followed with the official adoption in 988 CE by Vladimir the Great of Kievan Rus. The West Slavs came under the sphere of influence of the Roman Catholic Church since the 12th century, and Christianization for them went hand in hand with full or partial Germanization. The Christianization of the Slavic peoples was, however, a slow and in many cases superficial phenomenon, especially in what is today Russia. Christianization was vigorous in western and central parts of what is today Ukraine, as they were closer to the capital Kiev, but even there, popular resistance led by Volkovs, pagan priests or shamans, recurred periodically for centuries. Even though the Byzantine Christianization firstly has slowed down the Eastern Slavic traditions in Rus, it has preserved the Slavic traditions in the long term. While local Slavic figures and myths, such as Baba Roga in Croatia were forgotten, Slavic culture continued to exist and even flourish in the Eastern Slavic countries. In the case of a Christian Latinization of the Eastern Slavic countries, this may not have been the case. The West Slavs of the Baltic withstood tenaciously against Christianity until it was violently imposed on them through the Northern Crusades. In Bohemia, shortly after the country's official Christianization in the late 9th century, a popular anti-Christian rebellion broke out. Among Poles and East Slavs, rebellion outbreaks occurred throughout the 11th century. Christian chroniclers reported that the Slavs regularly re-embraced their original religion relapsi sunt de nuo ad paganismus. Many elements of the indigenous Slavic religion were officially incorporated into Slavic Christianity, and, besides this, the worship of Slavic gods has persisted in unofficial folk religion until modern times. The Slavs' resistance to Christianity gave rise to a whimsical syncretism, which in Old Church Slavonic vocabulary was defined as devavri, double faith. Since the early 20th century, Slavic folk religion has undergone an organized reinvention and reincorporation in the movement of Slavic native faith <inaudible> <inaudible> Overview and common features 20th century scholars who pursued the study of ancient Slavic religion include Vyacheslav Ivanov, Vladimir Toporov, Maria Gimbutas, Boris Rybakov, and Roman Jakobson amongst others. Rybakov is noted for his effort of re-examination of medieval ecclesiastical texts, synthesizing his findings with archaeological data, comparative mythology, ethnography and 19th-century folk practices, and for having given one of the most coherent pictures of ancient Slavic religion in his major book Paganism of the Ancient Slavs and other works. Among earlier, 19th-century scholars there was Bernhard Severin Ingemann, known for his study of fundamentals of a North Slavic and Wendish mythology. Historical documents about Slavic religion include the Primary Chronicle, compiled in Kiev around 1111, and the Novgorod First Chronicle compiled in the Novgorod Republic. They contain detailed reports of the annihilation of the official Slavic religion of Kiev and Novgorod, and the subsequent, double faith. The Primary Chronicle also contains the authentic text of Rus' Greek treatises dated 945 and 971 with native pre-Christian oaths. From the 11th century onwards, various Rus writings were produced against the survival of Slavic religion, and Slavic gods were interpolated in the translations of foreign literary works, such as the Malala's Chronicle and the Alexandres. The West Slavs who dwelt in the area between the Vistula and the Elbe stubbornly resisted the Northern Crusades, and the history of their resistance is written down in the Latin chronicles of three German clergymen. Dietmar of Merseburg and Adam of Bremen in the 11th century and Helmold in the 12th, in the 12th century biographies of Otto of Bamberg, and in Saxo Grammaticus's 13th century Gesta Denorum. These documents, together with minor German documents and the Icelandic Nilinga saga, provide an accurate description of northwestern Slavic religion. The religions of other Slavic populations are less documented, because writings about the theme were produced late in time after Christianization, such as the 15th century Polish Chronicle, and contain a lot of sheer inventions. 
In the times preceding Christianization, some Greek and Roman chroniclers, such as Procopius and Jordanes in the 6th century, sparsely documented some Slavic concepts and practices. Slavic paganism survived, in more or less pure forms, among the Slovenes along the Soka River up to the 1330s. Indo-European origins and other influences The linguistic unity, and negligible dialectal differentiation, of the Slavs until the end of the first millennium CE, and the lexical uniformity of religious vocabulary, witness a uniformity of early Slavic religion. It has been argued that the essence of early Slavdom was ethnoreligious before being ethnonational, that is to say, belonging to the Slavs was chiefly determined by conforming to certain beliefs and practices rather than by having a certain racial ancestry or being born in a certain place. Ivanov and Toporov identified Slavic religion as an outgrowth of a common Proto-Indo-European religion, sharing strong similarities with other neighboring Indo-European belief systems such as those of Balts, Thracians, Phrygians and Indo-Iranians. Slavic and Baltic religion and mythology is considered more conservative and closer to original Proto-Indo-European religion, and thus precious for the latter's understanding than other Indo-European traditions, due to the fact that, throughout the history of the Slavs, it remained a popular religion rather than being reworked and sophisticated by intellectual elites as it happened to other Indo-European religious cultures. The affinity with Proto-Indo-Iranian religion is evident in shared developments, including the elimination of the name of the supreme god of heaven, asterisk Dias, and its substitution by the term for cloud. Slavic Nebo, the shift of the Indo-European descriptor of heavenly deities Avestan Diva, Old Church Slavonic Div, Proto-Indo-European asterisk Diwos, celestial, derived from Dias to the designation of evil entities, and the parallel designation of gods by the term meaning both wealth and its giver, Avestan Baga, Old Church Slavonic Bog. Much of the religious vocabulary of the Slavs, including Vera, faith, Right choice between good and evil, svet, holy, mir, peace, agreement of parts, and rai, paradise, is shared with Iranian. According to Adrian Ivakiv, the Indo-European element of Slavic religion may have included what Georges Dumézel studied as the trifunctional hypothesis. That is to say a threefold conception of the social order, represented by the three castes of priests, warriors and farmers. According to Gimbutas Slavic religion represented an unmistakable overlapping of Indo-European patriarchal themes and pre-Indo-European—or what she called, Old European—matrifocal themes. The latter were particularly hardwearing in Slavic religion, represented by the widespread devotion to Matsira Zemlya, the damp Mother Earth. Rybakov said the continuity and gradual complexification of Slavic religion, which started from devotion to life-giving forces Berigini, ancestors and the supreme god, Rod generation, itself, and developed into the high mythology of the official religion of the early Kievan Rus. <laughs> god and spirits As attested by Helmold c. in his Chronica Slavorum, the Slavs believed in a single heavenly god begetting all the lesser spirits governing nature, and worshipped it by their means. According to Helmold, "...obeying the duties assigned to them, the deities have sprung from his the supreme god's blood and enjoy distinction in proportion to their nearness to the god of the gods." According to Rybakov's studies, wheel symbols such as the thunder marks Gromovoy ZNAK and the six petaled rose inside a circle, e.g., which are so common in Slavic folk crafts, and which were still carved on edges and peaks of roofs in northern Russia in the 19th century, were symbols of the supreme life giver Rod. Before its conceptualization as Rod as studied by Rybakov, this supreme god was known as Devos, cognate with Sanskrit Deva, Latin Deus, Old High German Ziu, and Lithuanian Dievas. The Slavs believed that from this god proceeded a cosmic duality, represented by Belobog, white god, and Chernobog, black god, also named Tiarnoglafi, black head, mind, representing the root of all the heavenly masculine and the earthly feminine deities, or the waxing light and waning light gods, respectively. In both categories, deities might be either Razi, reed givers, or Zernitra, wizards. The Slavs perceived the world as enlivened by a variety of spirits, which they represented as persons and worshipped. 
These spirits included those of waters Mavka and Rusalka, forests Lasovic, fields Polyovic, those of households Domavic, those of illnesses, luck and human ancestors. For instance, Leshi is an important woodland spirit, believed to distribute food assigning praise to hunters, later regarded as a god of flocks and herds, and still worshipped in this function in early 20th century Russia. Many gods were regarded by kins Rod or Pleme as their ancestors, and the idea of ancestrality was so important that Slavic religion may be epitomized as a monism, i.e. worship of ancestors, though the Slavs did not keep genealogical records. The Slavs also worshipped star gods, including the moon Russian, Mesiets, and the sun Solantsi, the former regarded as male and the latter as female. The moon god was particularly important, regarded as the dispenser of abundance and health, worshipped through round dances, and in some traditions considered the progenitor of mankind. The belief in the moon god was still very much alive in the 19th century, and peasants in the Ukrainian Carpathians openly affirm that the moon is their god. There was an evident continuity between the beliefs of the East Slavs, West Slavs, and South Slavs. They shared the same traditional deities, as attested, for instance, by the worship of Zuaruses among the West Slavs, corresponding to Sverizik among the East Slavs. All the bright male deities were regarded as the hypostases, forms or phases in the year, of the active, masculine divine force personified by Perun. Thunder. His name, from the Indo-European root asterisk per or asterisk perk, to strike, splinter. Signified both the splintering thunder and the splintered tree, especially the oak. The Latin name of this tree, Quercus, comes from the same root, regarded as symbols of the irradiation of the force. This root also gave rise to the Vedic Parianya, the Baltic Perkunas, the Albanian Perendi, now denoting God and Sky, the Germanic Fjorgan and the Greek Karanos, thunderbolt, rhymic form of asterisk Peranos, used as an epithet of Zeus. Pregyny or Paragyny, in modern Russian folklore rendered Breganya or Bereganya from Breg, Bereg, meaning shore, and reinterpreted as female water spirits, were rather, as attested by chronicles and highlighted by the root asterisk per, spirits of trees and rivers related to Perun. Slavic traditions preserved very ancient Indo-European elements and intermingled with those of neighboring Indo-European peoples. An exemplary case are the South Slavic still living rain rituals of the couple Perun per Peruna, Lord and Lady Thunder, shared with the neighboring Albanians, Greeks, and Arumanians, corresponding to the Germanic Fjorgan Fjorgan, the Lithuanian Perkunas Perkuna, and finding similarities in the Vedic hymns to Parianya. The West Slavs, especially those of the Baltic, worshipped prominently Svetovid, Lord of Power, while the East Slavs worshipped prominently Perun himself, especially after Vladimir's 970s to 980s reforms. The various spirits were believed to manifest in certain places, which were revered as numinous and holy, they included springs, rivers, groves, rounded tops of hills and flat cliffs overlooking rivers. Calendrical rituals were attuned with the spirits, which were believed to have periods of waxing and waning throughout the year, determining the agrarian fertility cycle. Topic. Cosmology, iconography, temples and rites The cosmology of ancient Slavic religion, which is preserved in contemporary Slavic folk religion, is visualized as a three-tiered vertical structure, or world tree, as common in other Indo-European religions. At the top there is the heavenly plane, symbolized by birds, the sun and the moon, the middle plane is that of earthly humanity, symbolized by bees and men, at the bottom of the structure there is the netherworld, symbolized by snakes and beavers, and by the thonic god Veles. The Z. Bruch idol, which was identified at first as a representation of Svetovid, found in western Ukraine, represents this theocosmology, the three layered effigy of the four major deities Perun, Dazbog, Makish, and Lada is constituted by a top level with four figures representing them, facing the four cardinal directions, a middle level with representations of a human ritual community, Karavid, and a bottom level with the representation of a three headed thonic god, Veles, who sustains the entire structure. The scholar Yuri Dinda studied the figure of Triglav, literally the three headed one, and Svetovit, which are widely attested in archaeological testimonies, as the respectively three headed and four headed representations of the same Axis Mundi, of the same Supreme God. 
Triglav itself was connected to the symbols of the tree and the mountain, which are other common symbols of the Axis Mundi, and in this quality he was a summus deus, a sum of all things, as recorded by Ebo, c. 775-851. Triglav represents the vertical interconnection of the three worlds, reflected by the three social functions studied by Dumezel, sacerdotal, martial, and economic. Ebo himself documented that the Triglav was seen as embodying the connection and mediation between heaven, earth and the underworld. Adam of Bremen c. 1040s to 1080s described the Triglav of Wolin as Neptunus triplicis natura that is to say, Neptune of the three natures, generations. Attesting the colors that were associated to the three worlds, also studied by Carol Yaramir Urban 1811-1870, white for heaven, green for earth and black for the underworld. It also represents the three dimensions of time, mythologically rendered in the figure of a three-threaded rope. Triglav is Perun in the heavenly plane, Svetovid in the center from which the horizontal four directions unfold, and Velas the psychopomp in the underworld. Svetovid is interpreted by Dinda as the incarnation of the Axis Mundi in the four dimensions of space. Helmold defined Svetovid as Deus Deorum, God of all gods. Besides Triglav and Svetovid, other deities were represented with many heads. This is attested by chroniclers who wrote about West Slavs, including Saxo Grammaticus c. 1160 According to him, Rujivit in Sharenza was represented with seven faces, which converged at the top in a single crown. These three, four or many headed images, wooden or carved in stone, some covered in metal, which held drinking horns and were decorated with solar symbols and horses, were kept in temples, of which numerous archaeological remains have been found. They were built on upraised platforms, frequently on hills, but also at the confluences of rivers. The biographers of Otto of Bamberg 1060-1061-1139 inform that these temples were known as Kantini, dwellings among West Slavs, testifying that they were regarded as the houses of the gods. They were wooden buildings with an inner cell with the god's statue, located in wider walled enclosures or fortifications. Such fortifications might contain up to four kantini. Different kantini were owned by different kins, and used for the ritual banquets in honor of their own ancestor gods. These ritual banquets are known variously, across Slavic countries, as brachina from brat, brother, molba, entreaty supplication and kanun short religious service in russia slava glorification in serbia sobor assembly and kurban sacrifice in bulgaria with christianization the ancestor gods were replaced with christian patron saints there were also holy places with no buildings where the deity was believed to manifest in nature itself such locations were characterized by the combined presence of trees and springs according to the description of one such sites in stetin by otto of bamberg a shrine of the same type in kobarad contemporary slovenia was stamped out in a crusade as recently as 1331 Usually, common people were not allowed into the presence of the images of their gods, the sight of which was a privilege of the priests. Many of these images were seen and described only in the moment of their violent destruction at the hands of the Christian missionaries. The priests Volkivs, who kept the temples and led rituals and festivals, enjoyed a great degree of prestige, they received tributes and shares of military booties by the kin's chiefs. History. Topic. Kievan Rus official religion and popular cults In 980 CE, in Kievan Rus, led by the great Prince Vladimir, there was an attempt to unify the various beliefs and priestly practices of Slavic religion in order to bind together the Slavic peoples in the growing centralized state. Vladimir canonized a number of deities, to whom he erected a temple on the hills of the capital Kiev. These deities, recorded in the primary chronicle, were five, Perun, Xors Dozbog, Strybog, Simurgal and Makish. Various other deities were worshipped by the common people, notably Velez who had a temple in the merchant's district of Padi of the capital itself. According to scholars, Vladimir's project consisted in a number of reforms that he had already started by the 970s, and which were aimed at preserving the traditions of the kins and making Kiev the spiritual center of East Slavdom. Perun was the god of thunder, law and war, symbolized by the oak and the axe, and identified with the Baltic Perkunas, the Germanic Thor and the Vedic Indra among others. His cult was practiced not so much by commoners but mainly by the aristocracy. 
Velez was the god of horned livestock Skatabog, of wealth and of the underworld. Perrin and Velez symbolized an oppositional and yet complementary duality similar to that of the Vedic Mitra and Varuna, an eternal struggle between heavenly and thonic forces. Roman Jakobson himself identified Velez as the Vedic Varuna, god of oaths and of the world order. This belief in a cosmic duality was likely the reason that led to the exclusion of Velez from Vladimir's official temple in Kiev. Xors Dosbog, radiant giving god, was the god of the life-bringing power of the sun. Strybog was identified by E. G. Kagarov as the god of wind, storm and dissension. Makish, the only female deity in Vladimir's pantheon, is interpreted as meaning the wet or moist by Jakobsen, identifying her with the Matsira Zemlia, damp Mother Earth, of later folk religion. According to scholars, Xors Dosbog, Simurgil and Strybog represent the unmistakable Indo-Iranian Scythian and Sarmatian component of Slavic religion. According to Ivanitz, written sources from the Middle Ages leave no doubt whatsoever that the common Slavic peoples continued to worship their indigenous deities and hold their rituals for centuries after Kievan Rus' official baptism into Christianity, and the lower clergy of the newly formed Orthodox Christian Church often joined the celebrations. The high clergy repeatedly condemned, through official admonitions, the worship of Rod and the Rosanitsi, God and the Goddesses, or Generation and the Generatrixes, with offerings of bread, portage, cheese and mead. Scholars of Russian religion define Rod as the general power of birth and reproduction, and the Rosanitsi as the mistresses of individual destiny. Kagarov identified the later Domovoy, the god of the household and kinship ancestry, as a specific manifestation of Rod. Other gods attested in medieval documents remain largely mysterious, for instance Lata and her sons Lel and Palel, who are often identified by scholars with the Greek gods Leda or Leto and her twin sons Castor and Pollux. Other figures who in medieval documents are often presented as deities, such as Kupala and Koliata, were rather the personifications of the spirits of agrarian holidays. Topic. Christianization of the East Slavs Topic. Vladimir's baptism, popular resistance and syncretism In 988, Vladimir of Kievan Rus rejected Slavic religion and he and his subjects were officially baptized into the Eastern Orthodox Church, then the state religion of the Byzantine Empire. According to legend, Vladimir sent delegates to foreign states to determine what was the most convincing religion to be adopted by Kiev. Joyfulness and beauty were the primary characteristics of pre-Christian Slavic ceremonies, and the delegates sought for something capable of matching these qualities. They were crestfallen by the Islamic religion of Volga Bulgaria, where they found no joy but sorrow and great stench, and by Western Christianity then the Catholic Church where they found many worship services, but nowhere beauty. Those who visited Constantinople were instead impressed by the arts and rituals of Byzantine Christianity. According to the primary chronicle, after the choice was made Vladimir commanded that the Slavic temple on the Kievan hills be destroyed and the effigies of the gods be burned or thrown into the Dnieper. Slavic temples were destroyed throughout the lands of Kievan Rus and Christian churches were built in their places. According to Ivakiv, Christianization was stronger in what is today western and central Ukraine, lands close to the capital Kiev. Slavic religion persisted, however, especially in northernmost regions of Slavic settlement, in what is today the central part of European Russia, such as the areas of Novgorod, Suzdal, and Belozersk. In the core regions of Christianization themselves the common population remained attached to the Volkovs, the priests, who periodically, over centuries, led popular rebellions against the central power and the Christian church. Christianization was a very slow process among the Slavs, and the official Christian church adopted a policy of co-optation of pre-Christian elements into Slavic Christianity. Christian saints were identified with Slavic gods, for instance, the figure of Perrin was overlapped with that of Saint Elias, Velez was identified with Saint Blasius, and Urillo became Saint George, and Christian festivals were set at the same dates as pagan ones. Another feature of early Slavic Christianity was the strong influence of apocryphal literature, which became evident by the 13th century with the rise of Bogomilism among the South Slavs. 
South Slavic Bogomilism produced a large amount of apocryphal texts and their teachings later penetrated into Russia, and would have influenced later Slavic folk religion. Bernstam tells of a «flood» of apocryphal literature in 11th to 15th century Russia, which might not be controlled by the still weak Russian Orthodox Church. Topic. Continuity of Slavic religion in Russia up to the 15th century Scholars have highlighted how the conversion of Rus took place no more than eight years after Vladimir's reform of Slavic religion in 980. According to them, Christianity in general did not have any deep influence in the formation of the ideology, culture, and social psychology of archaic societies. And the introduction of Christianity in Kiev did not bring about a radical change in the consciousness of the society during the entire course of early Russian history. It was portrayed as a mass and conscious conversion only by half a century later, by the scribes of the Christian establishment. According to scholars, the replacement of Slavic temples with Christian churches and the baptism of Rus has to be understood in continuity with the foregoing chain of reforms of Slavic religion launched by Vladimir, rather than as a breaking point. V. G. Vlasov quotes the respected scholar of Slavic religion E. V. Anichkov, who, regarding Russia's Christianization, said, Christianization of the countryside was the work, not of the 11th and 12th, but of the 15th and 16th or even 17th century. According to Vlasov the ritual of baptism and mass conversion undergone by Vladimir in 988 was never repeated in the centuries to follow, and mastery of Christian teachings was never accomplished on the popular level even by the start of the 20th century. According to him, a nominal, superficial identification with Christianity was possible with the superimposition of a Christianized agrarian calendar Christian Easter Sunday, over the indigenous complex of festivals. Koliata Urilo Kupala. The analysis of the Christianized agrarian and ritual calendar, combined with data from popular astronomy, leads to determine that the Julian calendar associated with the Orthodox Church was adopted by Russian peasants between the 16th and 17th century. It was by this period that much of the Russian population became officially part of the Orthodox Church and therefore nominally Christians. This occurred as an effect of a broader complex of phenomena which Russia underwent by the 15th century, that is to say radical changes towards a centralization of state power, which involved urbanization, bureaucratization and the consolidation of serfdom of the peasantry, that the vast majority of the Russian population was not Christian back in the 15th century would be proven by archaeology, according to Vlasov, mound Kurgan burials, which do not reflect Christian norms, were a universal phenomenon in Russia up to the 15th century, and persisted into the 1530s. Moreover, chronicles from that period, such as the Pskov Chronicle, and archaeological data collected by N. M. Nikolsky, testify that back in the 15th century there were still no rural churches for the general use of the populace, churches existed only at the courts of boyars and princes. It was only by the 16th century that the Russian Orthodox Church grew as a powerful, centralizing institution taking the Catholic Church of Rome as a model, and the distinctiveness of a Slavic folk religion became evident. The Church condemned heresies and tried to eradicate the false half-pagan folk religion of the common people, but these measures coming from the centers of church power were largely ineffective, and on the local level creative syntheses of folk religious rituals and holidays continued to thrive. Topic. Sunwise Slavic religion, Withershin's Christianity, and Old Belief When the incorporation of the Russian population into Christianity became substantial in the middle of the 16th century, the Russian Orthodox Church absorbed further elements of pre-Christian and popular tradition and underwent a transformation of its architecture, with the adoption of the hipped roof which was traditionally associated to pre-Christian Slavic temples. The most significant change was however the adoption of the sunwise direction in Christian ritual procession. Christianity is characterized by Withershin's ritual movement, that is to say movement against the course of the sun. This was also the case in Slavic Christianity before the 16th century. Sunwise movements are instead characteristic of Slavic religion, evident in the Karavid, ritual circle dance, which magically favors the development of things. 
Withershin's movement was employed in popular rituals, too, though only in those occasions when it was considered worthwhile to act against the course of nature, in order to alter the state of affairs. When Patriarch Nikon of Moscow launched his reform of the Orthodox Church in 1656, he restored the Withershin's ritual movement. This was among the changes that led to a schism rascal within Russian Orthodoxy, between those who accepted the reforms and the old believers, who preserved instead the ancient piety derived from indigenous Slavic religion. A large number of Russians and ethnic minorities converted to the movement of the old believers, in the broadest meaning of the term—including a variety of folk religions pointed out by Bernstam, and these old believers were a significant part of the settlers of broader European Russia and Siberia throughout the second half of the 17th century, which saw the expansion of the Russian state in these regions. Old believers were distinguished by their cohesion, literacy and initiative, and constantly emerging new religious sects tended to identify themselves with the movement. This posed a great hitch to the Russian Orthodox Church's project of thorough Christianization of the masses. Velitskaya highlighted how the old believers have preserved Indo-European and early Slavic ideas and practices such as the veneration of fire as a channel to the divine world, the symbolism of the color red, the search for a glorious death, and more in general the holistic vision of a divine cosmos. Topic. Christianization of the West Slavs In the 11th century, Slavic pagan culture was still in full working order among the West Slavs. By the 12th century, however, under the pressure of Germanization, Catholicism was forcefully imposed through the Northern Crusades and temples and images of Slavic religion were violently destroyed. West Slavic populations stood out vigorously against Christianization. One of the most famous instances of popular resistance occurred at the temple stronghold of Svetovid at Cape Arcona, in Ruhia. The temple at Arcona had a squared ground plan, with an inner hall sustained by four pillars which contained Svetovid's statue. The latter had four heads, represented beardless and cleanshaven after the Rugian fashion. In the right hand, the statue held a horn of precious metal, which was used for divination during the yearly great festival of the god. In 1168, Arcona surrendered to the Danish troops of King Valdemar I, and the bishop Absalon led the destruction of the Temple of Svetovid. Topic. Slavic folk religion Ethnography in late 19th century Ukraine documented a thorough synthesis of pagan and Christian elements. In Slavic folk religion, a system often called double belief, Russian, Devavri, Ukrainian, Devoviria. According to Bernstam, Devavri is still used to this day in scholarly works to define Slavic folk religion, which is seen by certain scholars as having preserved much of pre Christian Slavic religion, poorly and transparently covered by a Christianity that may be easily stripped away to reveal more or less pure patterns of the original faith. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union there has been a new wave of scholarly debate on the subjects of Slavic folk religion and Devavri. A. E. Musin, an academic and deacon of the Russian Orthodox Church published an article about the problem of double belief as recently as 1991. In this article he divides scholars between those who say that Russian Orthodoxy adapted to entrenched indigenous faith, continuing the Soviet idea of an undefeated paganism, and those who say that Russian Orthodoxy is an out-and-out -out syncretic religion. Bernstam challenges dualistic notions of devaivery and proposes to interpret broader Slavic religiosity as a nogavery multi-faith continuum, in which a higher layer of Orthodox Christian officialdom is alternated with a variety of old beliefs among the various strata of the population according to Ivanitz 19th and 20th century slavic folk religion's central concern was fertility propitiated with rites celebrating death and resurrection scholars of slavic religion who focused on 19th century folk religion were often led to mistakes such as the interpretation of rod and rozanitsi as figures of a merely ancestral cult however in medieval documents rod is equated with the ancient egyptian god osiris representing a broader concept of natural generativity belief in the holiness of matsira zemlya damp mother earth is another feature that has persisted into modern Slavic folk religion. Up to the 20th century, Russian peasants practiced a variety of rituals devoted to her and confessed their sins to her in the absence of a priest. 
Ivanitz also reports that in the region of Vladimir old people practiced a ritual asking Earth's forgiveness prior to their death. A number of scholars attributed the Russians' particular devotion to the Theotokos, the Mother of God, to this still powerful pre Christian substratum of devotion to a great mother goddess. Ivanitz attributes the tenacity of synthetic Slavic folk religion to an exceptionality of Slavs and of Russia in particular, compared to other European countries. The Russian case is extreme, she says, because Russia especially the vastity of rural Russia neither lived the intellectual upheavals of the Renaissance, nor the Reformation, nor the Age of Enlightenment, which severely weakened folk spirituality in the rest of Europe. Slavic folk religious festivals and rites reflect the times of the ancient pagan calendar. For instance, the Christmas period is marked by the rites of Kolyada, characterized by the element of fire, processions and ritual drama, offerings of food and drink to the ancestors. Spring and summer rites are characterized by fire and water-related imagery spinning umba the figures of the gods Urillo, Kupala and Marzana. The switching of seasonal spirits is celebrated through the interaction of effigies of these spirits and the elements which symbolize the coming season, for instance by burning, drowning or setting the effigies onto water, and the rolling of burning wheels of straw down into rivers. <laughs> Modern Rodnovery. Since the early 20th century there has been a reinvention and reinstitutionalization of Slavic religion in the so-called movement of Rodnovery, literally, Slavic native faith. The movement draws from ancient Slavic folk religion, often combining it with philosophical underpinnings taken from other religions, chiefly Hinduism. Some Rodnover groups focus almost exclusively on folk religions and the worship of gods at the right times of the year, while others have developed a scriptural core, represented by writings purported to be centuries-old documents such as the Book of Velez, writings which elaborate powerful national mythologems such as the Mahavira of Selenkoism, and esoteric writings such as the Slavo-Aryan Vedas of Inglism. Topic. Reconstructed calendar of celebrations Linda J. Ivanitz reconstructed a basic calendar of the celebrations of the most important Slavic gods among East Slavs, based on Boris Rybakov's studies on ancient agricultural calendars, especially a 4th century one from an area around Kiev. See also Proto-Indo-European religion Proto-Indo-Iranian religion Historical Vedic religion Zagavery Topic Notes Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic Further reading Gimbutas, Maria. 1971. The Slavs. New York: Prieger Publishers. Ingemann, B. S. 1824. Grundtreck till en Nord Slavisk og Vendisk Gudelir. Copenhagen. Rybakov, Boris. 1981. Iazichestvo Drevnik Slavian Paganism of the Ancient Slavs. Moscow. Rybakov, Boris. 1987. Iazichestvo Drevne Rusi Paganism of Ancient Rus. Moscow Topic. External links Media related to Slavic paganism at Wikimedia Commons Studia Mythologica Slavica, Journal of the Institute of Slovenian Ethnology